Hi, my name is Roger and welcome. I have received messages asking me to go through reverbs and how to use them. So that is what we're going to do today. I also have a giveaway for one of you. If you stay till the end, you will know what that is about. First, what is reverb? Well, reverbs is reflections in a space. What kind of space determines what kind of reverb? The space could be a closet, a room, a hall, a church, and so on. Actually, it's multiple delays so close together that you can't hear the individual delays. They all add up to one signal, one reverb. If you're a bit sloppy, you could say that a reverb simulates room acoustics or room ambience, but that's not really accurate because during the development of both mechanical reverbs and digital reverbs, we have also created different sounds of reverbs which we can use creatively in our mixes, which doesn't necessarily simulate a room. We have different kinds of reverbs. And I will go through the acoustic ones first, and I will mention the most common ones. Some manufacturers have different names of these, but you will understand what I mean, hopefully. And the shortest form of acoustic reverb is often called ambience. Ambience is often early reflections only. And early reflections is the first initial part of the reverb, the first bounce, maybe the first few bounces of the wall, the ceiling. The, the floor. Then we have the room. A room is often meant to sound natural, like the signal, the instrumental, the vocal is inside of a room. Chamber is sort of a room by itself, but it's often clearer, more bright maybe. And that is when they built big studios in the former days, they often build reverb chambers because they didn't have digital reverbs or sampled reverbs as we have now. So they build rooms especially to capture the reverbs. And they are often hard surfaces and pretty empty. Actually, they are a room reverb, but sounds a little bit clearer and not so muffled for good and bad. We have hall reverbs that should simulate a big hall. Sometimes manufacturers also have like a cathedral, but that's just a big hall in my opinion. So the four most common is ambience, room, chamber and hall. Then we have the mechanical reverbs. Mechanical reverbs are actually some kind of thing that makes a tail on the signal. And the most common ones are plate reverbs. And that is actually when you put a small speaker, a sound generator on a big piece of metal plate, the metal plate vibrates and on the other side of the metal plate, some kind of microphone pickups is picking up that signal and send it back to the mixing console or in this case your door, something. A common thing in guitar amplifiers is spring reverbs. And that is just what it says, it's metal springs with the same principle as the plate reverb. Some kind of sound generator in one end and some kind of pickups in the other end. Let's go through the most common settings you will find on a reverb before we listen to the actual reverbs. So first is the type, and we have already mentioned that. A pre-delay is the dry signal before the reverb starts. Actually, it's like simulating how far from the wall are you when you are generating the sound before the first bounce. This is actually very important. The less you have on the pre-delay, the smaller the room feels and also the tighter the reverb feels. The longer pre-delay you have, the more of the dry signal you let through before the reverb comes. A vocal, for example, could actually benefit from that because all the consonants and articulation will go through before the reverb signal comes. And that means that the vocal will feel closer to you without lowering the reverb. The next is the length of reverb, and that is probably most self-explained. How long is the tail gonna be? Is it gonna be very short, like an ambience, maybe 0.5 seconds? 
or a l very long, like a cathedral at eight seconds. The shorter the decay is, the closer the signal will feel, and the longer, the m further away it will feel. Except if you combine it with the long pre-delay, then the signal will feel close anyway. Let me make an example. If you're in a concert hall and you're listening to a singer, and you're in the first row, you will hear the singer before all the bounces of the wall and the ceiling, so you will hear the dry signal of the singer before the reverb comes. But the reverb is very, very long. Therefore, the singer will feel closer, but the, the room will feel big. If you're in the back of the concert hall, you will hear the singer and the reverb probably at the same time, and then the singer will also feel like it's very far away. The next adjustment is diffusion, and diffusion is how scattered the signal is. If the signal bounces back and forth, you don't have any diffusion. If it goes all around the place, you have a lot of diffusion. Then we have damping, and damping shouldn't be just an EQ where you are lowering the treble. It should be that the signal, the tail of the reverb, will get duller the longer the tail is. Then we have the most important knob, and that is dry, wet. Dry, no reverb signal, wet, full reverb signal, and no original signal. So if you're placing a reverb plugin on the track, you can use this to see how much reverb you want. If you use reverb on a send, as I've done in my example, the reverb signal should be on wet, and you adjust the amount of reverb in how much you will send to that reverb. One more thing, when it comes to reverb engines, we have two kinds of reverb engines nowadays in the plugin world. There's convolution reverbs. They build reverbs on samples, so they have sampled a real room, a real hall, or a real hardware gear to make the reverbs. They are a bit limited in what you can do with them. They often don't have a diffusion knob, for example. And the second category is algorithmic reverbs. And they are actually doing a mathematical calculation of the original signal and then makes a reverb from that. An algorithmic reverb will often have plenty of things that you can adjust to your liking. If you want me to do more of these instructional tutorial videos, please like this video. It really helps me. And also subscribe if you haven't. Now let's listen to what I've done reverb-wise to a guitar loop. I have just dragged in a guitar loop in my session. It sounds like this. I'm sorry, but you will get very bored of that guitar loop at the end, but it's the reverbs that are in focus, isn't it? So let's open up the mixer and I have a reverb on my track and I will adjust the mix knob till I find a reverb I think is fine for this guitar. So I'll turn it on and play it. I use reverbs both on sends and on different tracks, mostly on sends, because reverbs are pretty heavy on the CPU of the computer, so I can use the same reverb for different sources. But also I can combine different instruments, like a whole drum kit into one reverb and make it sound like a unity, like one drum kit. So I will get rid of this, and I've made some sends. Now they are all at unity gain, sending to the reverbs, just so you can hear them properly. I've exaggerated them. So let's start with the ambience. I also have two different reverb plugins on each track, on each category of reverbs, just so you can hear the difference between different plugins, how they sound. The first one is the Space Designer and Ambience. I've chosen the Snare Chamber, 0.4 seconds. It sounds like this. I also put the Ocean Way Studios reverb plugin on it from UAD. This is my favorite reverb plugin because it doesn't sound like a reverb. Strange, I know, but listen to it. And without it, it's hard to hear, but listen, if I start dry and then put it in after half of the loop. It 
it sounds like it's in a room. That's really nice. Then I have the room reverb. The space designer, I chose a cello studio room, 1.1 second. Sounds like a rather big room. And then the Valhalla room reverb, one second-ish. Both sounds good. Different, but good. The chamber, first the seventh heaven from Li Liquid Sonics. You can hear that it's a room sound, but it's sort of clearer. And also the Abbey Road Chambers from Waves. Both sounds good, also. How does a hall sound? A hall sounds like this from the Space Designer. Warm hall, 3.4 seconds. And the Seventh Heaven Hall. I will adjust the pre-delay here and make a very long pre-delay so you can see what I mean, like 100 milliseconds. Obviously too much reverb, but could you hear that the guitar came a little bit closer than it was before? The pre-delay is really cool to work with. The plate reverbs. In the Space Designer, I chose an impulse from Nevo Studios. I made a video about these reverbs. I will link it in the description. It sounds like this. The EMT 140, 1.5 seconds. And then I also use the UAD EMT 140. And the last category is spring reverbs. First, the Space Designer. I also use the Nevo Studios. This is a sort of luxury spring, the AKG BX20. This was a real studio workhorse in the 80s. Sounds like this. And then I wanted more like a real spring, a guitar amplifier spring. So I chose this pedal board from Logic with the spring box. There you have some examples of reverbs and how to adjust them. In a future video, I will show you how I use reverbs and how I think about reverbs when I use them. I told you I will have a giveaway because I started my YouTube channel one year ago. I will have a giveaway for one of you. And that is a reverb. This. This reverb has never been out of the box, except in the music store. It was a Demo X I bought a few years ago. I have several of these, and these sound really, really, really good. So I will give one of my reverbs to you. This is a TC Electronic M1 XL, and it sounds amazing. So please subscribe so you don't miss out on what you have to do to get this. Year. Year in Swedish is or or. Until next time, Roger that. <laughs> <laughs>